Welcome to your monthly real estate market update for Anchorage. My name is Jamin Gerker. I'm an associate real estate broker in the state of Alaska, and my mission is to help you to build an intentional and significant legacy for yourself and your family by coaching in real estate. And today we're going to be talking about what's going on in the residential real estate market for the entire Anchorage Bowl area. Now keep in mind, we're going to be looking at the residential, so single family, the condo, and the multifamily market. Before we get started though, do make sure to give this video a like, subscribe, do all that good stuff. We're getting close to 10,000 subscribers. That has been a big goal of mine for a long time, so this content really does help you and benefit you. Do make sure you give us a subscription. That would help a ton. Now, without further ado, let's go and get into today's market update. Looking first at the single family market. Now, the first thing I want to look at the single family properties is just how many properties we have on the market. What does the inventory look like? Well, what we see is that this time last year, there was 231 properties. Now we're looking at approximately 327 properties on the market. Now, this is a big jump year over year, and you can kind of see it in the chart there where it kind of bounces up. And what I would say is that's good news, that's that's positive if you're a buyer or even if you're a seller to a certain extent because you know where we were at inventory-wise, it's not good long-term for the benefit of the entire market. But keep in mind, this is still historically very low. Uh, 327 for the month of June, where we have the most, we actually have the completed information uh, is still very, very low. Like usually we would expect somewhere around like 850 up to like a thousand homes on the market. So the fact that we're still only at approximately 330 homes really does indicate that there's still a, a shortage of homes in the Anchorage area. The next thing we see is that the number of properties that actually sold during the month of June actually took a bit of a drop because this went from about 262 properties to about 170 for the next year. And that's 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 something we have to really pay attention to because the months of June, July, August, you know, September as well to a certain extent it starts tapering down at that point. Those are going to be the big months where most homes are going to sell. There's a big bell curve that happens in Alaska for the real estate market for the time the properties are actually selling and it kind of peaks around June, July and then starts going back down once we get to the fall time frame. And what we see right now is there's not as many properties selling as there normally is because you know about that um, 230 or so that was still pretty low but just keeping in mind the inventory shortage that we had that was still doing pretty good and now we've got more properties on the market but less of them are selling so is this a sign that the market is starting to shift you know we'll talk more about that in the um, kind of in the recap and the summary and everything but for now let's go and just keep that in mind the next thing we see is the average sold price from about 480 to about 503,000, which means that we're seeing that approximately about a four and a half percent increase for the average sold price in Anchorage for single family homes. Now this is kind of a good healthy amount of appreciation what we would expect. We're not back to the, the double digit appreciation like what we had back in the, the COVID era. So that's, that is favorable and that is where we want to see it. I know it doesn't feel really good right now if you're a buyer look, looking to get into this market, but keep in mind the time that you're going to spend as a homeowner watching this go up is going to be much longer than it's going to be as a buyer watching this go up and expecting this to somehow crash. I'm not really expecting that, but we'll again, we'll talk more about that in the summary. All right, let's go and switch gears real quick and take a look at what's going on in the condo market. So in the condo market, we see that the inventory went from about 59 this time last year to 103 this year. So that's a pretty big jump in inventory all of a sudden if we're just looking year over year. If we're looking at kind of a historical perspective, though, normally we'd be seeing about 400, maybe low 500, somewhere in there. So we are seeing more condos compared to the year before. Yeah, and that's something we should really keep an eye on because I was saying for quite a while there, hey, the condos are going to be like, if you have a condo, you've been trying to get rid of it for a while. This is your time because for the first time in a while, we actually have a lot of buyers that are looking at condos as an affordable option because the appreciation is going up and interest rates are going up. So people are looking for affordable options and inexplicably the condos that were available just suddenly came off the market and those inventory just dried up like just when it was a good time to sell condo owners decided to hold on to them so we are maybe seeing a bit of a rebound here looking for the entire year we have seen an increase for the number of condos coming onto the market so 
you know, hopefully that is a uh, that's a trend that does continue. Maybe it's just an indication we just hit the low water mark for the entire market as far as inventory goes for condos, which is also a favorable indication. Now, the next thing we see is that the number of condos that actually sold for the month of June was 89 this time last year, and it is 89 this time this year. So that's right, there is absolutely no difference between those two. We've seen um, those more condos available aren't gonna actually start showing up and close sales for a couple more months here. So this is uh, still a good indication though the condos do remain in pretty high demand. Now finally for condos, we see the average sold price year to date went from about 270 this time last year to about 276 this year at the same time of year. So what that's showing us is that's about a 2.1% increase for the average sold price, which is still pretty decent. It's nothing It's nothing crazy, but it is in increase in the average sold price for condos. And um, you know, again, that's something we do wanna see because you now there have been years where that average sold price has gone down for condos just because there were so many available on the market. So if you have a condo, you know, take heart, the um, time to sell might actually be upon us. And if you're happy holding on to it and having the lower cost of living, nothing wrong with that either. All right, we're gonna get to the multifamily section of this market update in just a second. Before we do though, I just wanted to take a quick break here, remind you all I do host a podcast called the Alaskan Journey Podcast where I interview people who have lived in Alaska for a while and we've um, had the opportunity to talk with a lot of people about what they think about the state, what they, you know, the likes, the dislikes, and everything else in between, kind of talk about their journey and any tips and tricks they would offer to other people thinking about doing the same. And actually looking at um, bringing in some folks to kind of give them uh, some different aspects of Alaska as well in the near future. So do be watching for those episodes. And um, yeah, link for that is going to be in the description section down below. And let's finish up with the multifamily market for this market update. All right, now let's take a look at what's going on in the multifamily market. So this time last year, there were 64 multifamily properties that were available on the market, and now there are 80. Now this is still, this is an increase, and this is favorable really for anybody because it shows we're starting to somewhat get back to a more balanced market. And, you know, long term, that's, that's really what keeps a real estate market healthy. Um, but still, with that being the case, we're seeing an increase for the number of multifamily properties for every month through this entire year. And for this month, where it's gone up by, I think it's only like 16 properties or so, um, that's still kind of representative of what we've seen for the entire year. Now, we're up to 80 at this point, And keep in mind, usually around this time of year, we'd see anywhere from about 130 to nearly 200 properties being on the market. So it is going up and we're still nowhere near where we were pre-COVID. Now, the number of multifamily properties have actually sold went from 21 this time last year to 22 this year. And normally we'd see anywhere from about 30, 36 properties that would sell during the month of June. And we're obviously not back to that point yet, but the inventory is still way low. So. This does indicate that there is still a pretty good demand for multifamily properties in Anchorage. So if you're an investor, take heart. That is something that's um, still very much the case and reflective in the data. All right, last but not least, the average sold price for multifamily properties went from about 501,000 to about 560, which means we're seeing an approximately 12% increase for the average sold price. Before we get too worked up over this, let's also keep in mind though that the average sold price for multifamily includes everything from the little rinky-dink uh, duplex that's you know barely got anything and barely got a roof on it, all the way up to like the the 30 plex commercial property that's selling for multi-million dollars and it includes everything in between so yes there is a big increase for the average sold price here it's probably more because we had some large multi-family property is sold and that's kind of thrown our, our data off here but yes there is an increase for the average sold price and it wouldn't surprise me if it's really healthy probably somewhere like if you took that one large property out there uh, if I hazard a guess, we're still looking somewhere around like the 4 or 5% because uh, rents are still at a good spot to support the, the mortgages and the notes that you have on there. Obviously, interest rates are going to have an impact, not as much if the rents are keeping up with it. But yeah, that's, uh, that's really uh, something... I'm sure investors can really uh, really speak more about, and um, it really just comes down to your specific property and how it's performing. Now, let's go ahead and give you a quick summary. What does all this mean? Well, number one, it means the inventory is starting to climb back. Now, we're not there just yet, and I think I'm not sure really if it's 
if we're going to get there anytime soon. Like we're probably looking like the next three to five years or so for when we're finally back to where the inventory was before. Because keep in mind, everybody refinanced a couple of years ago or purchased a property at a really low interest rate. And people are really hesitant to just let those go. They're just really just hanging on as hard as they possibly can because they're looking out, they're seeing the price of properties going up and they're seeing the interest rates go up. And so they're like, man, I'm not going anywhere. I'm hanging on to this. And that's creating prolonging a shortage, which means the prices go up. So it's just kind of the cycle that just keeps going and going and feeding itself. Really not expecting a collapse anytime soon as some people have really been projecting for years at this point, not seeing it here in this specific market. The inventory is just too low still to, to justify that. And um, if you're one of those folks that have been waiting for a while, I would highly encourage you to get off the fence and get serious about it if you're in a position financially to make it happen. You know, that's that's really, can't emphasize that enough. If you're not in a position to do this, then, you know, just, just don't do it. That's what I would say as far as the single family properties. Now for the condos, Again, if you've been a seller for a long time or wanting to sell for a long time and you've just hesitated because uh, the market's not very good for condos, condos are, condo market is doing pretty good right now. So this is something that you're thinking about. Feel free to reach out. Let's chat and let's see how we can maximize what you can get for your property. For investors, I mean, kind of the same thing I always say, just make sure your numbers actually balance out. Reach out if you have any questions as far as that goes. But this has been your market update for Anchorage. I hope it's been useful and we'll see you next time. Thank you.